All right. In this video, we study positive semi-definite matrices. First, we define uh, positive semi-definite matrices based on two equivalent conditions, and we show the equivalence of these conditions. And then we define a new type of matrix product called the Hadamard product, or also known as Shure product of matrices. And finally, we prove the Shure product theorem that says if two matrices are positive semi-definite, then their Hadamard product is also positive semi-definite. Okay, let's start. So here's our first theorem. Let A be a real symmetric matrix. Then these two conditions are equivalent. That is, first, all the eigenvalues of A are non-negative. And second, for any vector x, this inner product ax times x is greater than or equal to zero. So these are equivalent. And eventually we define a positive semi-definite matrix as a matrix that satisfies these conditions. So let's prove it. Uh, first, let lambda i and ui be the ith eigenvalue or the ith eigenvector of A. So that means A ui equals to lambda i ui. Okay, so this is satisfied. So first assume this one first condition, then derive the second condition. So suppose all the eigenvalues are non-negative, then we have this, and uh, we have also spectral decomposition like this. Then for any x, so let's say x is any vector, then calculate this inner product, ax times x. First, replace this a with this spectral decomposition, then we have this. Then, uh, due to the bilinearity of the inner product, we can take this summation and this constant out of the inner product, like this. Now, this part, so uj transpose x, this is same as the inner product between uj and x. So we replace this part to this. Then we have this, right? And the inner product is just a constant, so we can take this out to have this. So now look at this. We have uj x and uj x, so it's the same number repeated twice. So that means it's a square of a real number. And by assumption, this lambda is non-negative, and the square of a real number cannot be negative. So after all, we have everything non-negative. So this proves uh, the first uh, uh, proposition. If one con for, uh, condition one is satisfied, then condition two is satisfied. Next, let's prove the converse. So suppose the condition two is true. That means for any vector x, we have this inner product between ax and x is greater than or equal to zero. Then, since x can be any vector, we can pick one of the eigenvectors, ui. So according to this inequality, we have this inequality. And again, we have the spectral decomposition of A to have this part. Okay, now look at this part. So we have the multiplication between uj transpose and ui. But uh, since A is real and symmetric, actually we are further assuming uh, that uh, uh, they belong to uh, different eigenvalues. And uh, even if they do belong to the same eigenvalue, we can always uh, make them orthogonal to each other. So in any case, this is equal to Kronecker's delta. That is, when i is equal to j, then this is equal to 1. Otherwise, this is equal to 0. So we replace this with uh, Kronecker's delta here. So if we take this summation now, so one of so j runs from one to n, and one of the, them is equal to i. So for that one, we have lambda i u i, and otherwise, this delta i j is zero, so they disappear. So after all, what's remaining 
is this term. Now let's take this lambda out and we have this. But this ui is normalized. Therefore, this inner product is equal to 1. So therefore, after all, we have this. But now, 0 is less than or equal to lambda i, but lambda i can be any eigenvalue. So all the eigenvalues are actually non-negative. And we are done. So based on this theorem, we define a positive semi-definite matrix as a real symmetric matrix that satisfies one of these two conditions. Or well, actually, they are equivalent, so both conditions. And write A is greater than or equal to 0. But be careful. You know, A is a matrix, so it can contain many elements. And some of them can be negative. But still, it can be positive semi-definite. Okay? It doesn't say all elements must be positive. In fact, it is, it is quite possible that many of the elements are negative, and only some of the elements are positive, and still it is positive semi-definite. So don't get confused. And this is the convention we adopt here. OK, next theorem. Suppose we have two n by n matrices A and B. If both of them are positive semi-definite, then their sum is also positive semi-definite. So this means positive semi-definiteness is preserved under addition of matrices. And this is actually very easy to prove. So let x be any vector. For that vector, uh, calculate this inner product, a, B, a plus b times x times x. Then first distribute this x, and we have this. And by using the bilinearity of the inner product, this can be split into this and this. But by assumption, A is positive semi-definite, so this is non-negative. And B is positive semi-definite, so this is also non-negative. Therefore, their sum is non-negative. And we are done. OK, next theorem. Let u be any vector then u times u transpose is a matrix, and that matrix is positive semi-definite. And second, if u is a unit vector, that is normalized vector, then this u u transpose is an orthogonal projection to the one-dimensional space spanned by u. So let's prove the first one. Uh, so in order to prove the positive semi-definiteness, we calculate this inner product. You, you transpose, this, this is the matrix, times x and x. x is any vector. And uh, since this part is same as the inner product between u and x, so we replace this one uh, with this, and uh, but by taking this out, we have ux in the product ux squared, which is non-negative, of course. The second point is actually easy, because if we rewrite this matrix times any vector x as this, by using this relation, then it is obvious uh, from the definition of a projection, uh, orthogonal projection, this is an orthogonal projection. Uh, and it's a projection on the space spanned by a single ve vector, u. And we are done. OK, now let us define a new type of matrix product called the Adamar product. And let A and B be n by m matrices. So it doesn't have to be square matrices. OK, it can be general matrices. And the element-wise multiplication defines a new matrix called A circle B. So that means the ij element of this new matrix is defined as this, the ij element of A times the ij element of B. So that is what we mean by element-wise multiplication. And this, is, this multiplication of matrix is called the Adamar product which is also known as the Shore product or just element-wise product of two matrices. OK, let's see an example. Uh, let's say A is A11, A12, A21, A22. 
and B is B11, B12, B21, B22. Then the other model product between these two matrices is A11 times B11, A12 times B12, A21 times B21, A22 times B22. So that's one example. And another example, since it doesn't have to be, you know, they ha don't have to be square matrices. So, for example, consider two vectors, uh, U uh, made of A and B, and V made of C and D. Then their other map product. So, you know, but ma vectors can be considered as matrices. So, uh, for this and this, their other map product is a times C and B times D. That's it. Okay, so this is the final theorem of the video uh, that is called the sure product theorem. Let A and B be n by n matrices, so they are square matrices, and if they are both positive semi-definite, then their Adama product is also positive semi-definite. In other words, the Adama, the Adama product preserves the positive definiteness of the matrices. So, now the proof. First, let us assume the spectral decompositions of A and B to be this and this. That is, A has eigenvalues lambdas and eigenvectors u's, and B has eigenvalues mu's and eigenvectors v's. And using these spectral decompositions, let us calculate the Adama product of these two matrices. So uh, A is replaced with this, and B is replaced with this. And now, if we calculate this and apply the distributive law to each element of the result, then we, we should get this, right? So that is, uh, so this is the matrix and this is a matrix. And by assumption, this part is non-negative. And so it is sufficient to show that this part, so this is uh, the Adama product of this matrix and this matrix. So if we can show that this is positive semi-definite, then we are done, okay? Because if each of these is positive semi-definite, then if it's multiplied by a constant, it's still a positive semi-definite, right? And the, the, the sum of positive semi-definite matrices is, again, positive semi-definite, according to a theorem we have proved before. So that's enough. Now we want to prove this. And from now on, for simplicity, we omit these indices K and L. Okay, so the ij element of this matrix, uh, this Adama product is this, the ij element of this matrix and the ij element of this matrix. And u is a column vector, so u transpose is a row vector. Therefore, the ij element of this matrix is the product between the ith element of u and the jth element of u. And same for this part. And so this is just a real number, so we can arrange the, rearrange the order of these numbers, and we have this, so ui times vi and uj times vj. But ui times v, vi is the ith element of this Adama product, okay? And the same for this one. So it's the jth product, uh, jth element of this Adama product between u and v. So this is a vector, so the Adama product between two column vectors is a vector, and same for this one. And so this is nothing but the ij element of this matrix. So this column vector times its transpose. Okay, so according to the previous theorem, so vector a column vector times its transpose is a positive semi-definite matrix. So we are done. 
Okay, that's all for this video. See you later. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to this channel. See you next time. Bye.